Thank you, Lord. I've said again, let me say it one more time. So good to see you today. Our online campus is so good to see you. Uh, it's a very special day. It's Pentecost and my mom's birthday. And so, very special day, very special things that are going on today. But we know that during this time and this season of our life, that we are going forward in Jesus' name. And so let me just say once again, that we do not fall back as children of God. We rise up as children of God. You need to speak that over your family right now, over your marriage, over your business, over your farm, whatever you've got right now. And just say, uh -uh, I'm not going back. I'm not going to live in fear. But I'm going to go forward in Jesus' name. I'm going to listen to the voice of the Spirit of God and what God's saying to me right now. And God's going to do that work of grace for us. I just want to say once again, thank you so much for your tithing and giving during this time. Some of you have made decisions to tithe more during this time. Some of you have made decisions to give more during this time. And I just want to say thank you. And that is being used to reach out to our community. There was a, our overseer uh, made mention to me, and I told him at the beginning of this, I said, if you don't know a church or a pastor that's in need, we will try our best to reach out and do what we needed to do. There was a pastor in our local district and our local, the local places that we're in that had not received a paycheck for seven weeks. And our church stepped in and made sure that he had a paycheck and those things that, that we were doing there. So that's possible because of what you're doing in tithing and giving and everything that we're doing. You can do that text to give, online giving. You can drop it in the box. Uh, many of you are mailing it in. And I just want to say to our senior adults, you, you have blessed me in so many ways. Some of you are watching right now. Some of you are in this congregation right now. You have amazed me during this time of just mailing it in. Uh, we had an 80-plus-year-old that decided she was going to online give now. And just, just I've been amazed at so many people stepping up over and over and over again. I've been amazed at our teenagers. They're working jobs right now, summer jobs. And the first thing that they're doing is paying their tithe and giving the offering. So I'm just amazed at what you're doing right now. And it's helping us go forward in Jesus' name. I want you to go with me to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. And we're going to finish up our series this morning, and then we're going to go into our summer series, which will last for a while, but it's going to be a great series, and we're excited about that. How many of you didn't even know it was summer because you've lost track? And many of us feel that way right now. We've just lost track. Is this... 2020 still. Ezekiel chapter 37 is one of those chapters, and we've sung a little bit about it before, but I want to ask you a question this morning. Have you ever been in a valley? Have you ever been in a valley? Has there ever been a time in your life that you thought, I don't know if I can see my way to the next part of my life, the next season of my life, because I feel like physically, emotionally, spiritually, maybe with your family, maybe you go home and you don't know why there's so much tension in your home. You don't know why that this is happening in your business. You don't know all these things, but you're in a valley. Has there been anybody in here? Maybe that was just nine o'clock. Has anybody ever been in a valley? And you're just like, okay, God. I'm in a valley. And I want to tell you something this morning. Sometimes God puts us in a valley. You're saying, Pastor, I thought we just went from glory to glory. We do, but sometimes to get to the next glory, we've got to go through a valley. We've got to go through something that happens in our life that we don't totally understand or even comprehend. And we're in a valley. We're in a tough time. And we, a lot of times, we will rebuke Satan and the economy and the political parties and the people around us. But what if God puts you in a valley? What if God puts you in quarantine? What if God changes your job? What if God gets you out of a relationship that you, you were toxic already, but it's just been easy 
And especially during quarantine, it's been easy to go back to some things. And God took away some things out of your life that has been there before. And you've almost become very predictable of going back to the same conversations, the same relationships, the same things that's happened. You come home, you've worked a hard day, you get to the recliner, you don't speak to your spouse, you don't speak to your children. And God said, I'm going to make you so bored with entertainment that you look at your spouse and y'all have to have a conversation. I I'm going to bring you to the place that your children are going to look at you and say, I am tired of my phone right now. What are we going to do? Where can we go? How can this happen? What can I, I just want to do something. I'm tired of these four walls. And God puts you right in the middle of a valley and you're trying to rebuke everything and, and you look around and Satan's not there. Your past is not there. Your failures are not there. And you look in the middle of the valley where you are right now, and the only person that's there with you is God and some dry bones. And you're in a place right now that you've been asking God to speak to you, but you couldn't get away from your phone for five minutes for God to speak to you. And you were so busy at work, and you were so busy in toxic relationships, and you were so busy that enough people were liking your posts that you really don't even like. And you were in this season of your life, and God says, I'm about to put you in the middle of a valley so that I can have your full attention and that I can speak to you. What if God has put us in a valley? Now notice this, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me, he set me. One version says, he grabbed me and put me. How many of you have ever been snatched up by God? God snatched you up where you were, the situation that you were in, the relationship that you had, and God said, I'm about to snatch you up any good southern people here know what snatch you up means. Some of y'all got snatched up by your parents, and it shows y'all know how to behave. Praise God. You got snatched up, and somebody put you on the right path. But when God does this, it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. They hadn't just been there for a little while. They had long enough to be there that they became dry bones, brittle bones, bones that had no hope. They, 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 it was done. It was, it was the conversation that Jesus had with Mary and Martha. Lord, don't do anything because if you would have come four days ago, the miracle could have happened. And Jesus said, you're thinking your way that, yes, the resurrection could have happened four days and I could have healed him while he was still alive. And Jesus is there saying, I am the resurrection and the life. And it doesn't matter what time I come. I'm still the God of miracles and can do what nobody else can do in situations. And it looks impossible. And God's saying, it's not impossible with me. He said, son of man, can these bones live? I said, I love this. This is Ezekiel speaking. I said, sovereign Lord. You alone know. How many of you know he didn't want to make a full commitment, but he also didn't want to get it wrong when you're in the middle of the valley? God, God, you alone know if these dry bones can live. You alone know if this can happen. Because I've tried to help myself out of this, this, this situation long enough. And God, I can't find any help within myself because I can't make dead, dry impossible situations become any better. If I could have got them off of drugs, I would have already done it. If I could have fixed my marriage, I would have already done it. If I could have made the prodigal son or daughter come back home, I would have already done it. If I could have made the business work, I would have already done it. I've worked, I've cried, I've prayed, I've done everything within myself. And then you get to a place in your life that says, 
I don't have anything else to do. God, you know. And God's speaking to you these words saying, can these dry bones live again? And you get to a place and you say, God, if, if I'm going to have any help, it's never going to come from me. It's got to come from you. It's got to be your spirit. In, in, in John 14, in verses 16 and 26, he said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send my helper, my comforter, my spirit to you. Now, Jesus Christ is Emmanuel. He is Son of God. He is Lord. He is Master. He is Lagos. He is the Son of Man, Son of David, Lamb of God, New Adam, Light of the World, King of the Jews, and the Rabbi, the Master Teacher. At the ascension, He says these words, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. No You'll never be able to do it within yourself. You'll never be able to make it work by yourself. But I'm about to do this thing in your life. I'm not going to leave you by yourself. How many of you, you have not been forsaken in Jesus' name? You've not been left alone. God's got a plan. God's got a work to do. It's going to be done in Jesus' name. You just got to say, God, I want to make sure it's done. God, I need you to be my helper. Now, when we get carried down in the middle of the valley, it's not to punish us. It's for God to speak to us. And when God speaks to us, He's going to tell us to do something. Now notice this. He tells Ezekiel in, in, 37, in, in chapter 37, 4 through 14, He tells them, He said, speak to the bones. Let me say this to you. How many of you know it matters what you speak? It matters what you speak. It matters what you say. Well, I just say what I want to say. How's that working out for you? How many, how many relationships has that hurt? How, many, how much business has that cost you? I just say what I want to say. Well, I'm just negative. Mama was negative. Daddy was negative. My old pastor was negative. Not your new pastor. Your old pastor was negative. Not any, any of those kind of things. I just say and I do what I want to. Well, every time that you say something that does not line up with the Word of God, you bring death to the situation and the relationship. Because the Scripture tells us the power of life and death is in our tongue, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, and you say, well, that was the way mama was, and that's the way grandma was, and that's the way daddy was, and that's the way granddaddy was, and that's just the way they were. But let me tell you something. You've been placed in the middle of the valley to change the way that you speak. Because if you'll prophesy on those things in what God's doing God's saying, you're about to hear a rattling that's going on, that the things that were dead and dried up and had no hope, had no peace, had no love to it, I'm about, if you'll prophesy the right thing, if you'll say what God wants you to say, dry bones are going to live again. Relationships are going to happen again. The right relationship at the right time. That God's never left you or forsaken you. And God's about to do a work of grace for you. I want you to speak blessings over your marriage. I don't want you to talk about your kids' failures. I want you to talk about when they get saved. When God does a work of grace in their life. When your business is thriving again. That God's going to do that work of grace. Speak those things. Well, Pastor, I just don't want to be happy, clappy. I'm a realist. You may be a realist, and you can look at the situation that you're in right now, but you got to believe that God is your healer and is your hope, and He is your help. And if you speak what He speaks and you speak life, there will be life. But if you keep on speaking death, there's only going to be death. It's only going to get worse. You've got to speak life. When you speak those things, things just start to rattle. How many of you believe there's a rattling going on right now? See, hell 
doesn't like that it's Pentecost Sunday. Hell doesn't like that churches have got together and prayed for 21 days for God to turn back the tide of COVID-19. Hell does not like it when the children of God get together and start praying together and believing together. And yes, we, we the, the downslope of COVID-19 was coming. So yes, there had to be chaos in another area and another region. But let me tell you, let me stand here today and say these words. Hell, you may be trying to come at us in every way, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And God's will and work will be done. People are going to be delivered. You're not going to relapse in Jesus' name. The work of grace is going to be done. You're not going to go back to the toxic relationship again. God's work. We're going to grow as a church. We're going to build buildings. We're going to have greater campuses. We're going to do what God's called us to do. And we're going to see thousands of people saved by the power and the grace of God. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Speak the word. Yes, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I came on the scene to bring life and life more abundantly in Jesus' name. So speak the word. See, in John chapter 12, they were mad. Not just at Jesus. They were mad at Lazarus. See, some of you, they're going to be mad at Jesus, but they're going to be mad at you too. Because you were in the grave, but you came out. And they said, not only are we going to take care of Jesus, we're going to take care of Lazarus too. But how many of you know, it did not stop Lazarus from sitting at the table with Jesus and praising God. So if we're going to experience that help that we need, we have got to have that vision. And we've got to speak the right words. We've got to see the miracles. When the miracles happen, graves are going to be empty. And we're going to have a movement of God. The miracles mobilize the people of God that are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in fire. Now, I want you to see this. God wants us to experience a greater move of God's Spirit in our life in unity. In unity. Let me say that again. Let me read this out of Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 22. It says, I will make them one nation in the land. On the mountains of Israel, there will be one king over them all. And they never again will be two nations be divided into two kingdoms. They will no longer defile themselves. Now notice this. With their idols and vile images or with any other offenses. For I will save them from their sinful backsliding. And I will cleanse them. And they will be my people. And I will be their God. Now. I want to talk about something that's very serious, and I want you to understand this. And I want you to say these words with me. Sin equals death. Sin is serious. We have, for the past 12 weeks or so, we have changed our whole society because of a disease named COVID-19 that has a 98.5% rate of recovery in we've changed our whole society now should we be wise should should we should we baptize us in, in hand sanitizer praise the lord should we be careful about those things but there is a 98.5 percent recovery rate if you receive covid19 that you're going to recover somebody say praise god I, I know that's not popular that's not pc to say because people want to bring you into fear. But, but that's the truth. But with sin, there is a 100% chance of death. Death of dreams, death of marriages, death of relationships, death of praise, death of everything. When we allow sin in our life and allow sin in our heart, to take us to the place in our life that we just look at sin and go, sin's no big deal. How many of you know sin's a big deal? But let me tell you the bigger deal. We have a Savior that has given us the Holy Spirit that we don't have to walk in sin any longer. Romans 6, 23. I want to show you this. For the wages of sin is... Let's say it again. For the wages of sin is... 
But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, we know when we sin. Look at everybody. Just, just look at me. Online campus. Give me an amen. How many of you know when you sin? You know when you sin. I don't know if that's right or wrong. You know it. If, if you think it's wrong, stop doing it. Stay away from it. That person always brings me down because they're a gossip. Stay away from them. Well, I'm married to them. Pray for them. You got to stay away from sin. Now, we know when we sin. We know. Well, I don't know if that's right or wrong. If you have to hide it, it's sin. If you're worried about who's going to know you're doing it, it's sin. You, you need to understand this in the hearts and lives of people. Now, let, me, let me just show you. If somebody out there online doesn't know what sin is, I'm about to tell you what sin is. Galatians chapter 5. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft. Let me stop here. How many of you know, if we're not careful, we allow spirits in our lives that should not be there? They cannot possess you, but they can oppress you and use you. And that's what's happening in our nation right now. People are being used by spirits that's trying to bring division into the body of Christ and to our nation. Hatred. And let me stop right there. And prophetically, I'm going to say this. We stand against hatred, racism, or anything else that brings people and divides people in any way in Jesus' name. And I'll say it over and over again. There's not a black church, and there's not a white church, and there's not a brown church. There is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one church. There is only one Lord. There's only one faith. There's only one baptism. Let me tell you something. If, if you and we all struggle, let's be honest. Let's be honest that we all struggle with certain things. We all struggle with some of the ways that we were brought up and raised and around certain things. But it's time for everybody to come together and say that hell will not tear us apart in Jesus' name. That we ask tough questions at tough times. We stand on the principles of God's word. But let me tell you something. Hell will not tear us apart and make us bring division. That we don't have unity. That we don't have anointing. And that we don't have blessings forevermore. Now. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And let me say this, along with debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft that a lot of people can get behind, we have a problem with people that cause discord and dissensions. And how many of you know that is sin also? That if you're causing discord and dissension and hatred by what you're saying, by what you're doing, you need to check yourself and to make sure that you're doing what God's called you to do. Because just like sexual immorality is wrong, just like adultery is wrong, just like any sexual sin is wrong, God is calling the church not to be in discord and dissension in any way. He's calling the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to stand up in unity that you are my brother, you're my sister, I will hold your hand, I will love you, I will take care of you, and I will do what Christ has called me to do. And anything less than that, I will not stand for that in Jesus' name because we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Give Him praise. When we handle our backsliding, our sin, and the stuff that we've allowed in our life right now, what's going to happen is we're going to have unity. When we have a unity, we have anointing, we have blessings forevermore. And then God starts restoring the kingdom. He starts restoring the two nations that he were talk was talking about is Judah and Joseph. So God starts restoring when we have unity and we've left the sinful lifestyle. He starts restoring Judah. He starts restoring praise in the house of God. You know where praise in the house of God's going to be restored at? In your house, 
in your private devotion. You want God to show up for you in public, you're not showing up for God in private. And you want 30 minutes to fix everything that you've done all week long. We need to start practicing praise, not only in our devotion time with our family, and not only with our family, at our job, in every part of our life. We need to start saying what Christ would say about the situation. And it's not about a style. You can be loud or you can be quiet, but we need to praise the Lord. You can cry or dance, but we need to praise the Lord praising the Lord and I must stand here and say this today we will be a church that is not about a style not about the things that we do the way that it looks but we will be a church of praise because we need the presence of God because the presence of God changes everything it's not about a style. It's not about a song. It's not about I like it, I don't like it. No, if you've been saved today, you've got something to praise God about. If God has brought you out of the miry pit and put your foot upon the solid rock, you've got something to praise God about right now. It's not about a song. It's about my Savior. And when I understand that, everything changes. So he's going to bring back together two nations. He's going to bring back together Judah praise. He's going to bring back together Joseph, which is our dreams. He's going to bring back a church of spirit and truth. He's going to bring back a church that is united, not backslidden any longer, not in sin any longer. He's going to be, bring back a church of praise and worship and adoration because I've been saved and I've been brought out of so much. And yes, when that happens, the helper will be here. The comforter will be here. The power of the Holy Spirit will be here. And on this Pentecost Sunday, when we start praising the Lord and the presence of God is in this place, it will blow from both north, south, east, and west. The wind of the Spirit will start coming into the place, start coming into our households, and God's work of grace will be done. So when this happens, the dreams are going to come back. See, some of you, as a young man, you told your dream and it ended you up in a pit somewhere, but God's work was still going to be done. You got to live out your dream when you're in Potiphar's house. You got to live out your dream when you're in prison. In the middle of the valley, you got to live out your dream when you're in the palace because God's work is going to be done. And you've got so much that you believe in the dream that God's given you. You tell the children of Israel before you die, do not let my bones stay in this place because my bones may look dead, but they're going to live again and they're going to come out of a grave. So do not let my bones stay here. Because I'm going to land flowing with milk and honey. I'm going to see the goodness. And let me tell somebody today, you may be in a part in your life right now that you think your dreams have died and God's saying by His grace that is sufficient in all things, the dream has not died. Now when this happens and the Holy Spirit comes, there's going to be unity, a purpose confirmed by His covenant that brings peace to your soul. Paul talks about in Philippians, he said, that the God of peace, the God of peace. He said, I'm going to keep my mind upon him. And when my mind is stayed upon him, he will keep me in perfect peace. You're saying, Pastor, during these chaos, times of chaos, I can have peace? Absolutely. If Paul can have me, peace in the middle of a prison, how many of you know that during quarantine, during disease, during civil unrest, you can have the peace that passes all understanding? Why do you have that? Because you have the helper, the comforter, the Holy Spirit in your life. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 24. It says, my servant David will be the king over them. And they will have but one shepherd. They will follow my laws and be careful to keep my decrees. They will live in the land I gave to their servant Jacob. The land where your ancestors live. They and their children. Say this with me. They and their children. I'm not giving up. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not willing to sacrifice a generation. I, I'm not willing to say, well, that's just the way that it is. 
Everybody's children's going to have this happen and this happen and this happen. I stand on the authority of God's word that we have returned. We've left our wicked ways. We're in the unity of the spirit. They're going to have dreams and they're going to have praise because the presence of God is going to be there. And when the presence of God is there, there will be a peace that passes all understanding because my I don't have a contract with God that's dependent on me. I have a covenant with God that's dependent on his goodness. His grace, His mercy in my life. And so if He said it's going to be done, now notice this, they and their children and their children's children will live there forever. And David, my servant, will be their prince forever. And I will make a covenant of peace with them. And it will be an everlasting covenant. And I will establish them. I will establish them. I'm tired of double-minded people that are unstable in all their ways. I'm tired of a double-minded church that's unstable in all its ways. We don't have to be double-minded and unstable with every wind that comes by, with every post that comes up, with every meme that we get our theology from. We need to stand as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and say I'm established that Jesus Christ is my Savior. This is my church. This is what I do. This is the dreams that God's given me. And I will praise Him in Jesus' name. I will make a covenant of peace with them, an everlasting covenant. And I will establish them and increase their numbers. And I will put my sanctuary among them forever. Now I want you to see this because you've got to grab a hold of this right now. You've got to say, I- I'm believing. And the only way that you're going to be able to stand during these pe- power perilous times that we're living in right now is to have the peace that passes all understanding. The only way that you're going to be able to stand. If you listen to all the junk that's around you right now, you'll be up all night. You'll have ulcers. You'll be sick the rest of your life. You will stay in your house. You will be so scared to get out of your house. You need a peace that passes all understanding. You, you, need, you need something that makes you say, uh-uh, no, you're not holding me back any longer. I've been in fear long enough. No, God did not give me the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Yes, we're going to use wisdom. We're going to know what the season that we're in right now. But if God's got me in the middle of the valley and he tells me to prophesy the bones that they can live again, you know what I'm going to do? As for me and my house. I'm the pastor. God has blessed me to be the shepherd here. And as for this flock, as for this place, we're going to grow. We're not going to go back. We're going to rise up in Jesus' name. We're not going to sit back and say, what do we got to cut out? We're going to say, no, what are we going to add to reach one more person with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Whatever it takes. You don't need to. Dad, you don't need to say back, I got to cut down on what my family's going to do. No, Dad, I need somebody. I need some spiritual fathers and mothers in this place to rise up and say, my children will be blessed. My grandchildren will be blessed. We will be a blessing in the land of the living. Somebody's uncle needs to speak to him right now and say, hey, now God's going to deliver us and you can be a part of it or you can sit in your comfort, in your quarantine, in your fear, in your moment. But let me tell you, God's going to deliver us and you can be a part of it. You can be a part of it or you can stay in your comfort and convenience or you can step out by faith. For three days she fasted, Esther fasted. And when she got out of that fast, she went to the king. And God already had a process in place that was going to bring peace to the nation of Israel. God was about to do a work. And you can either get on board and get to be a part of it. Or stay in the fear and stay in the cave and stay where you are and let it be something that you look back and go, I wished I would have jumped on in. I wished I would have been a part. I wished I would have seen a revival in my lifetime. How many of you know God wants to send us revival? We've just got to want revival. We've got to take the time in our life to say, God, I want it more than I want my next breath. God, I want it. I want you to stand with me right there where you are. And I'm going to read one last scripture. I want you to see this. 
In Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 27, it said, My dwelling place will be with them. My dwelling place will be with them. My dwelling place will be with them. Let me speak to somebody that you've been so lonely and so messed up emotionally. God's saying, speak to the dry bones. Speak to the dry bones. Speak to the fear. Speak to the anxiety. Speak to the worry. Speak to your bank account. Speak to whatever you got to speak to. And so you will live and not die. You will declare the works of God. Speak to your children. Speak to your marriage. Speak to those things right now. Speak to your fear. Because no fear is greater than the power of God. Speak to those things. Notice this. Then the nations will know that the Lord may make Israel holy. When my sanctuary is among them forever. Emmanuel, God with us, has given us life he saved you he sanctified you he's filled you with the spirit he's healed you you wouldn't even be standing how many of you know there's some of you wouldn't even be standing here today without the healing power of God you know you wouldn't even be married right now without God divinely intervening you know you would not be in your right mind right now but God divinely intervened in your situation. And you know this. He's your healer. He's our coming king. This king of glory. Strong and mighty in battle. Now you can live out the rest of your days in the middle of that valley with dry bones all around you. Or you can start prophesying. I will live and not die. My children will be saved in Jesus' name. My marriage will be saved in Jesus' name. I will be healed in Jesus' name. The work of grace. My, my business is not over with. It's, it, it's in trouble right now from the outside. But God placed me here, put this dream in me. His presence is with me. And I'm not going to give up until God divinely intervenes in my life. Some of you have been so worried about relapsing, going back to a pill bottle, going back to the bottom of the barrel of the, the alcohol that you were in, going back to the toxic relationship. And I say right now in Jesus' name, you will not go back to cold, dead, lifeless religion. You have a relationship with God, and God puts you in the valley to show you that the grave can be emptied again, the work of grace can be done, and God puts you right in the middle of a valley to say you will live and not die you will declare the works of God so are you ready you're saying pastor what do I have to do what do I have to be do what do I have to do to find this helper what do I have to do you have to surrender you have to say God I'm tired of trying to make these dry bones live again I'm tired of I'm sitting in the middle of this valley without any hope and without an army around me. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. God, I want you to do something, and I want you to speak life in Jesus' name. So right there where you are, our online community right now, if you say, Pastor, I need the helper, I need the comforter, I need the power of the Holy Spirit in my life, I want you to lift both hands to heaven right now and say, God, I need you. I need you to be what you called me to be. God, I need you, God, to be the father and the mother, the husband and the wife, the leader, the one that has dreams, the one that's fully surrendered. God, I need you. God, I'm ready to get back to what you've called me to do, God. I'm praying that the work of grace is done right now. I am surrendered to you right there, God. Right there. Right there, God. Fill them with your spirit. Fill them with your power. Fill them with your grace, oh God, like never before. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to do one more thing. I want us to pray together. There's some of you saying, Pastor, I'm backslidden. I'm in sin. 
I'm dealing with some things in my life. But today you want to make it right. And you say, Pastor, I've already been back in the pill bottle again. I'm already back in a toxic relationship. I'm already back to my cold, dead, dry religion. And it only took me 10 weeks to get there. And I feel like a failure. And God's saying, you're my child. And I'll take your failures. And I'll give you a victory. All you got to do is to say, God, forgive me. There may be somebody out there today that's dealing with something. And you say, Pastor, I've never given my heart to Jesus Christ. But I want to give my heart to Jesus Christ today. Online community, I want you to pray with me. This sanctuary, I want you to pray with me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Let your blood wash away all of my sins. I will serve you as my Savior and my Lord in Jesus' name. I want to look to our online community just for a moment. If you did that this morning, you either came back to the Lord or for the first time made a commitment, we want to connect with you. If you'll text the word UGC Life to 474747, we'll connect with you. We'll give you a Bible and a devotion, and those things are going to be done. If you did that in the sanctuary today, you can do the same thing, and we'll just mail it to you because we want you to take the next steps because we believe that God's got greater, greater grace than you can even imagine, and we're believing that worship, work of grace is going to be done. Thank you for joining us for UGC Life Church Online. We are so encouraged to know that God is doing something amazing in your life. We want to thank you for generously giving to UGC Life. It's because of you that this ministry is possible. If you would like to give to this ministry, visit UGCLife.com and hit the Give button. If you enjoyed this service, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this on your social stories. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you.